How to add and subtract large numbers. Before we get into this, I'm going to assume that you can add and subtract any two numbers between 0 and 18. If you can't do that, this video probably won't be very helpful for you. Hi, my name is Will. I'm 30 years old, and I'm studying IT in hopes of becoming an informatological techno person. The other day, I discovered I'd forgotten how to multi-digit subtract. Let's redo multi-digit adding first, though, so we can compare and contrast. So here we have 9 plus 2, making 11. You can get this result by counting. Let's try adding 10 to both sides, so we have 19 plus 2 on top and 21 on the bottom. Now let's break it down. I take 9 and 2 and end up with 11, but I have no room to hold 11 in the 1's place. So what if I take 10 away from the 1's place and carry it into the 10's place? Back to our problem. 9 and 2 make 11, but I'm going to take the leading 1 and put it in the 10's place. This red one, like the black one below it, stands for 10. If this were happening in the hundreds place, it'd stand for 100, and so on and so forth. Anyway, 1 and 1 make 2, and we're done. Now, let's look at something more complicated. Don't panic! We're just going to apply the same steps over and over. 0 and 4 make 4. 7 and 4 make 11. Carry that leading 1. That's always a 1 since you can't take two numbers less than 10 and come out with more than 18, but I digress. And we're left with 9 plus 3 plus 1 or 9 plus 4 making 13. So we need to carry the 1 from the 13 over. And 9 and 8 is 17. Wash your face in kerosene. Actually, that wouldn't be advisable. And one more is 18. We can just write the 18 down because we don't have any more digits to the left to worry about. If you want, you could, visualize, you could visualize a 0 to the left of the 9, and you'd carry the 1 from the 18 on top of that. Do whatever you need to do that helps. And we're done. Now let's get into subtracting. In addition, we were piling on tens, hundreds, thousands, whatever, from the right to the left. In subtraction, we're going to be stealing the same from the left to the right. Or borrowing, if you insist. Let's take the bull by the horns. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. This isn't going to end well. But what if, just for fun, let's see if we can do this. So we've got 4 minus 7 in the ones place and 4 minus 9 in the tens place, so I just multiply both by 10, 3 minus 0 in the hundreds place, and 3 minus 1 in the thousands place. Now let's do the operations. We've got negative 3, 10 by 4 is 40, 10 by negative 9 is negative 90, 100 by 3 is 300, 100 by 0 is zilch, 100 by 3 is 3,000, 1,000 by negative 1 is negative 1,000. Take 340 to get 340, 3,000 minus 1,000 to get 2,000, and negative 3 and negative 90 conspire to make negative 93. And we've got 2340 minus 93. Well, let's just give this a shot. 0 minus 3 is... Don't! Negative 3. Well, let's start here anyway, since there are fewer digits. Here's a chunk of it. 40 minus 3. You can count down to 37 without writing anything, it's pretty easy. Well, this 40 can be broken down into 30 plus 10, and if we do that, we can do 10 minus 3 to get 7. We stole, or borrowed, 10 from the 10's place, making the 4 that was there a 3, and putting a 1 in front of what we've got in the 10's place. Back to the bigger question. Again, we can't do 0 minus 3 unless we like to break it out like we did before, and ultimately end up stalled. So I'm going to take away a 10 from the 10's place, and I'm going to add it on to the 1's place, 
When I'm just putting in a leading one, I get lazy and I just write it in diagonally. I hope you'll be forgiving and understand I mean 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 is 7, and now I have to tackle 3 minus 9. So I have to repeat what I did before, and steal 100 from the 100's place, and tack it on to the 10's place. So that 13 stands for 130. You don't need to remember what's 100's and what's 10's, I'm just saying all this so that it doesn't seem like magic. Remember, you can add 2,000, 200, 130, and 10, and get 2,340. That might be a good way to check for shenanigans. Anyway, 13 minus 9 is 4, and the 22 just comes down since there's nothing to subtract. And we're done! And in case you were curious, it's the same result as the original question. It's good to think about these big numbers as pieces of easier numbers. Now let's take the bull by the horns. Let's borrow from the 6, so we have a 5 and 18. 18 minus 9 gets 9. But now I've got 5 minus 9 in the tens place. I'm going to have to borrow again and make my 5 into 15. Now I can get 15 minus 9 equals 6. And 8 minus 8 is 0, 7 minus 5 is 2, and we're done. Here's a more complicated problem, though at first glance it looks harmless, or innocuous, if you prefer a $5 word. See, I need to borrow to deal with the 0 minus 3, but there isn't anything to borrow. So I have to go to the left until I find something, and then I can put 10 in the tens place, so that stands for 100. Then I can take a 10 away and put it in the 1's place. 10 minus 3 is 7, 9 minus 6 is 3, and 20 minus 10 is 10, and we're done. So you're probably wondering what brought all this on. Well, I discovered this really neat website called Khan Academy. It has a modular, task-based approach to learning and it fills in the Swiss cheese-like gaps in our move-on-to-the-next-level education. The website is somewhat addictive because it has game mechanics with rewards, and there's a progress bar on each task that you work to fill in. There are videos, too, and you can watch as much or as little as you like. There's a giant map of tasks, and you start at Edition 1 and work your way along. And when you're ready, you can take on one of the big challenges. So far they have arithmetic, pre-algebra, algebra, and trigonometry. And boy, do I wish they had this when I was in school. This kind of modular approach would have been just the thing because I could have taken as much time as I needed on things instead of just being rushed along. So I highly recommend you check out Khan Academy and start doing some exercises. Just remember to pace yourself.